Joining me once more to discuss the strange love of Martha Ivers and those fabulous costumes Barbara Stanwyck wore, here are authors Vince and Rosemarie Keenan. Okay, how about that ending, right? That has got to be one of the best in all of film noir. Hands down. Very startling. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. And there's, you were telling me that there was a particular thing about the dress at the end of the film, like an onset problem or something. <laughs> there was, because that beaded waistline um, had some sparkle to it. But when they went to do the close-up, where Kirk Douglas's gun is pushed up against the waistband, it was causing problems with the lighting. It was reflecting too much. You couldn't see the gun. <laughs> and you needed to yeah. see the gun in that shot. And so they called for Edith. And so Edith had just ran up a new copy of that dress with duller beads. So the same configuration, but no sparkle to them. And then they got the close-up. So it's interesting that I don't think people realize you think of a costume designer as designing the clothes and then going off to work on something else. But she was like right there. She was right there on the set to fix that immediately, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the way she tells the story. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is fantastic. And, and I love this ending with, you know, the, where she pulls the gun towards her. And there, I've heard great stories about how this was conceived, right? Yes. And, and, you know, I don't know if it's true, but I want to believe it so badly. As do we. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that this was Barbara Stanwyck's idea because she got it from Oni Madden, the, the gangster, the New York gangster, who she knew quite well back in the day. When she uh, was a dancer. When she was a dancer yes. down in the Deuce, you know, in 40 <laughs> Second Street. And uh, a guy, like, came up to accost Oni Madden with this gun, and he, he grabbed it and then pulled it towards him and, like, dared the guy to shoot him, figuring that it was actually kind of safer to do this, and he lived through it, you know, instead of being a target and running away from the guy he like pulled him and Stanwyck said oh I got the solution how we're going to play this scene and she recreated that moment right yes absolutely Although, fantastic again the version of this that I heard we came across in doing our research that Lewis Milestone the director took credit for coming up with this idea and said he suggested it to Stanwyck even though she's the one who personally knew Oni Madden but again in his version of, of events he pitched the idea to her, she loved it, brought up her history with Oni Madden, and she and Kirk Douglas did all of the blocking themselves. Well, Vince, in my research, I have discovered that directors <laughs> always take credit yes. for everything. So, so you know, I'm going to go point. with Stanwyck on this one. I, I'm okay. happy to go with Stanwyck yeah, on anything. Right. Yes. yes. Now, um, Kirk Douglas, fantastic in this movie. Absolutely. In his, in his screen debut. Yeah. And not a typical Kirk Douglas role no. at all, right? Well, it turns out he traveled across the country thinking he was going to play Sam, the Van Heflin part. So he was studying and, that role yeah. on the Super Chief on his way to Hollywood. <laughs> and the guy turned and said, you're Walter. Oh, I'm Walter. Fine. He just he just rolled with it. Wow, that's yes. amazing. And there's an interesting backstory about the making of this film, which, oh, yes. which was made at like a, a, a tumultuous oh, time yes. in Hollywood history with, with all the unions striking and you know just calamitous stuff going on right outside the paramount lot absolutely on the paramount lot and uh, striking strikers outside very uh, very first day that kirk is is going to work on the film is limber driver picks him up they get to paramount there's there's the picket line and the driver happens to point out oh that man in the line right there is the screenwriter robert rawson and kirk thinks that's the guy who wrote my picture so I'm not going to be talking to him today, apparently. He gets onto the lot, and it turns out that Lewis Milestone isn't there either. He won't cross the picket line. He's holed up at a restaurant across the street. And the producer, Hal Wallace, says, don't worry about it. We've got somebody else to, to, to direct you today. So there are a number of scenes in the movie that are directed by Byron Haskins. Yeah, the cinematographer, yeah. Yes. And Hal Wallace's bigger concern was that if the actors left the lot, they wouldn't be able to get back on. They'd be locked out. And so his solution was to say to Kirk Douglas, don't leave. So this is how Kirk is welcomed to Hollywood. He spends his first couple of nights sleeping in his dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, he's dedicated. Yes, he is. Uh, now, I hope that uh, all of this calamitous stuff that we're talking about I hope it finds its way into one of your books. Oh, we're already oh, yes. planning that right. one. Oh, yeah. Okay, very good. All grist for the mill. Yes, because, final plug, I mean, you guys have this fantastic series, Designed for Dying, Dangerous to Know.